Thank you. Madam Vice President, Excellencies, I'm pleased to present three reports submitted for your consideration under agenda item 10 of the Human Rights Council. Let me start with uh, the Secretary General's report, A stroke HRC stroke 57 stroke 78, which provides an overview of the work of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights in Cambodia in accordance with the Human Rights Council Resolution 54 stroke 36. The report acknowledges the positive engagement of the government with OACHR and highlights the crucial role of the office in assisting the government and the people of Cambodia in advancing human rights for all without distinction of any kind. Since the submission of the last report to the 54th session of the Human Rights Council, OECHR has continued to assist the government in fulfilling its obligations under international human rights law for the promotion and protection of human rights, including regarding equality and non-discrimination with respect to women, LGBT persons, indigenous people, and people with disabilities. The office continues to provide technical advice on several legislative initiatives, including the draft law on the protection of the right of persons with disabilities, the draft amendment to the law on association and non-governmental organizations, and the royal decree on the establishment, organization, and process of the National Authority for Alternative Dispute Resolution. The office also contributed to mainstreaming human rights in the United Nations Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework for Cambodia for the period 2024-2028. And moreover, the office highlights collaborations with the Cambodian Human Rights Committee in the framework of the office's Human Rights 75 initiative to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration for Human Rights. Excellencies, despite a significant reduction in poverty, OACHR remains concerned over the quality of and access to essential services in Cambodia. The report calls on the government to allocate the maximum of its available resources to the social sector for the progressive realization of economic and social rights for all. It further calls on the government to substantially increase public expenditure in the area of social security, healthcare and education with a view to reducing inequalities. A gender responsive social protection framework developed in accordance with principles of affordability, adequacy, universality, transparency, and non-discrimination is urgently needed to provide universal coverage for all especially for women workers in the informal economy. OECHR also remained concerned about the restriction imposed on civic space during the reporting period. The office continued to monitor cases involving the detention and trial of human rights defenders and activists. These arrests, arrests appear to be related to exercising rights protected under the International Covenant for Civil and Political Rights. We urge the government to fully uphold the human rights protections recognized under international law and create an environment where people can freely exercise their rights and functions. While acknowledging efforts of the government to address conditions of detention, especially overcrowding, the report calls for the strengthening of alternative measures to detention. It further calls for the adoption of a national legal aid policy and the improvement of the administration of justice system through the development and use of a criminal database system developed with the support of OECHR. Worth mentioning at this stage that the Secretary General has called on the government to continue its positive engagement with OECHR, including by extending the Memorandum of Understanding with OECHR for a period of five years to promote 
sustainability of technical cooperation activities. The Office will continue to work with and provide technical support to the Government of Cambodia and other relevant stakeholders to ensure respect for the right of all people in Cambodia and that no one is left behind. Madam Vice President, Excellencies, I now turn to the report of the High Commissioner on the implementation of technical assistance provided to the National Commission of Inquiry to investigate allegations of violation and abuses committed by all parties to the conflict in Yemen, portion to Human Rights Council Resolution 54 stroke 29, covering the period from October 2023 to August 2024. During the reporting period, Yemen has witnessed several upheaval on the economic, humanitarian, and security fronts, and the risk to human rights work in the country are substantial. The de facto authorities have arbitrarily detained 17 United Nations staff members, including eight OECHR staff. 13 of those staff members were detained in June 2024, and four in 2023 and 2021. These developments will further restrict and impact the working environment needed for humanitarian and human rights workers to properly carry out their functions in Yemen at a time when all attention should be directed to assisting Yemen and the Yemeni people in addressing their needs. Regrettably, the general UN liquidity situation impeded the implementation of mandated activities funded by the United Nations regular budget. This has led to a reduction of mandated activities and the Human Rights Council Resolution 54 stroke 29 on the provision of technical support to the National Commission of Inquiry. Nonetheless, the office in Yemen continues to provide or making sure that the assistance extended to the commission meets the needs expressed. With the support of extra budgetary resources, OECHR is supporting the National Commission with the information technology equipment necessary for the conduct of the work, and moreover, the office in Yemen provided technical support to the Commission through a number of trainings, notably on monitoring and documenting human rights violations for achieving accountability and justice for victims. And OECHR continues to raise awareness amongst civil society actors about the mandate and work of the National Commission of Inquiry in order to foster common understanding and enhanced engagement. The report encloses recommendations that would reinforce the work and impact of the Commission, highlighting that it's essential for national commissions to be effective in its investigation with visible outcomes and for its findings to be backed by comprehensive legal analysis grounded in international law. OACHR remains committed to providing substantive technical assistance and advice to the National Commission of Inquiry, including strengthening its capacity to investigate and report on allegations of human rights violations and abuses committed by all parties to the conflict in Yemen in line with international standards and to contribute to the foundation for a human rights-based transition to peace and reconciliation. Madam Vice President, Excellencies, the third report presented under Agenda Item 10 is the OECHR report on the implementation of Resolution 51-33 on promoting international cooperation to support national mechanisms for implementation, reporting, and follow-up. The report provides a summary of the exchanges that took place during the one-day intersessional seminar held on the 23rd June 2023 in Geneva, as well as information on other development relating to the establishment and strengthening of national mechanisms for implementation, reporting, and follow-up since the adoption of Council Resolution 51-33. The organization of the second intersessional seminar foreseen this year and the launch of the virtual knowledge hub 
have been postponed to 2025 by the HRC decision 55 stroke 115, owing to the liquidity crisis affecting the United Nations Secretariat. Exchanges among member states and other stakeholders during the intercessional seminar in 2023 and other forum confirmed that while there are no one size fit all solution on national mechanism for implementation, reporting and follow up, there are some key elements that are common to effective national mechanisms. There is therefore a growing interest from member states to learn from one another how their specific setup structure and ways of operating help serve the primary purpose of reporting on and follow up to their international human rights obligations. Excellencies, in many states, the efficiency of national mechanisms has been strengthened through standing structures with adequate resources, sufficient political leverage and mandates, robust legal institutional framework and diverse representation and membership. Exchanges on practices show that the increased role of national mechanisms in mainstreaming human rights into sectorial policies should be encouraged. As national mechanisms are well positioned to promote concerted, coherent, and coordinated implementation at the national level, they will benefit from a higher level of political support. On information collection and management, some national mechanisms refer to the added value of using digital tracking tools and platforms and shared practices as part of effort to build coherent, coherence with other national processes. In this regard, the second intercessional seminar mandated by the Council Resolution 51 stroke 33, scheduled to take place next year, will provide space for more in-depth discussions on the implementation of recommendations, monitoring and evaluations, including through digital tools and platforms and participation of actors involved in data planning and collection. Madam Chair, the report I'm presenting today also provides an update on effort to create the virtual knowledge hub for national mechanisms delayed due to the liquidity situation. In addition, the report contains a summary of key initiative on national mechanisms, including the pledges made in the framework of the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the launch of the International Network of National Mechanisms under the ages of the Kingdom of Morocco, Paraguay, and Portugal. The report recommends that the Human Rights Council continue to pay attention to emerging practices developed by national mechanisms, including through technical cooperation and peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, desk reviews, and publications. It also recommends that another report be submitted to capture all developments since the publication of the present report, including on the creation of the Virtual Knowledge Hub on National Mechanisms and on the practices which will be shared during the second intercessional seminar in 2025 on information management and the promotion of coherence with other implementation and follow-up processes at national level. On that note, thank you for your attention.